Good morning everyone, my name is Chris and in today's video I'm going to be covering the costs on my recent trip to Puerto Rico. I did loads of stuff there so if you're going to be traveling to Puerto Rico it's more than likely you're going to be doing some of the activities or visiting some of the places that I went to. So in this video I'm going to be covering my accommodation costs, my transport, some of the entrance fees, parking fees and also the prices of visiting the beautiful islands there. Okay, so first I will cover my transport costs. Before I went on this trip, I was reading up to see if I could use just public transport to keep the costs down. But if you want to really like tour the entire island, it's pretty much impossible. There's not that many buses and also Uber would be super expensive as well. If you're just visiting like the San Juan area, I think they do have quite a good like internal bus system there so you could get by within San Juan if you want to really explore the island I think the car is the only way I barely saw any buses at all there so I rented one straight from the, the airport I think it was called pay less <laughs> the funny thing is I thought this was going to be a trip where I'd finally have cheap car rental because I live in the US and my uh, insurance is covered there in Puerto Rico since it's a US territory but I did still get a surprise. So what I thought would be $27 a day, once I arrived there, there was some like Puerto Rican tax that they told me about, which was like 11%. And then I also needed to pay for the toll roads because basically to get between the big cities there, if you, if you don't take the toll roads, you're literally adding hours onto your trip. So I think that was like a $5 extra that they added on. I don't, I don't know about any other fees, but it ended up turning out to be $45 a day. So I found that yeah super expensive but that's what I did to get around the island just a tip people are asking me what I use to get around the island I just use Google Maps I always download the offline map I do that in any country that I go to save my save my ass many times so then even if you don't have internet you can still get around it might not have the updated um, traffic info if you're offline but yeah you can still get around easily so I did that and one thing to mention is right now as of when I went the, the roads are really terrible at the moment many 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 potholes I'm not sure if that's because of like the aftermath of Hurricane Maria but yeah there's just so many potholes I remember I was going down a, a, a highway one time like at the max speed whatever it was like 70 miles per hour and, and I went straight into a pothole so super dangerous I was kind of uh, a bit scared to drive there at night if I'm being honest because there's so many potholes and I couldn't really see properly so that's one thing to keep in mind um, you just gotta watch out so that that was what I was using for my transport so I'm gonna start off in the San Juan area because that's probably where the majority of people will be flying into so one of the main things to do there is obviously visit old San Juan the magical colorful buildings there from the colonial period Obviously to walk the streets there is for free, but if you're renting a car, you're probably going to be thinking, where do I park? So I've heard that if you do park there in, a, in an area that you're not supposed to, you will get like a 200 or more dollar fine. So definitely don't do that. A lot of the parking within San Juan is actually reserved for the residents there. There's like a line on the road, like a colored line. So then you'll be able to identify that. The parking within all San Juan, they were charging like $25, which I wasn't willing to pay for since I only, was only going to walk there for like three or four hours. But I did find um, a really cheap parking lot. It's actually the cheapest parking lot there, which is called Covadonga Parking Lot. There for the first hour, you will be spending $1.05, and then any additional hours will just be 70 cents. So I spent like four hours there and didn't even spend $4. So that, that's a really cheap option. And it's just one block from, from like the center of Old San Juan. So within five minutes, you're already in the center. So definitely do that. Another thing there is the Castillo del Moro, which is the famous fort there, that is $7 entry fee. Near San Juan also, there's the famous rainforest El Yuque. When I went there, the visitor center was actually closed, but apparently you're supposed to spend $4 per, per person and $2 for senior citizens. I didn't spend anything since the center was closed. One thing to keep in mind though is that it still hasn't really recovered from the Hurricane Maria. Like 90% of the trails are still shut off. But the actual forest has like grown back. It still looks insanely beautiful and I'd definitely go. There's still some amazing trails to do, some amazing viewpoints and yeah, just a, a really beautiful place. Some of the beaches that I visited around the area, there was one called Luquillo Beach and 
that was um, five dollars for the pack in there. I think there was some free pack in nearby, but it was all like packed by the time I got there. But that was the most beautiful beach I saw in that area near San Juan. It is only 40 minutes from San Juan, so pretty close a drive. But that is like the most tropical looking beach that I saw. Like beautiful white beaches, beautiful palm trees, really clear water. So that was the nicest one that I went to. Another nice beach that I went to was called Basia Talega. This is more of like a remote beach. It's 30 minutes from San Juan, so a bit closer. But also super beautiful, there was pretty much nobody there and it was just like really deserted and just some beautiful nature there. Now I'm going to get onto the island. So I actually visited three islands when I was there. So the first one was Culebra, which is a really beautiful island. The ferry terminal has now recently moved to Sabre, so Sabre Ferry Terminal. From there you can park your car. I think it was like $5 to park your car there for the day. For $4.50 round trip, you can go to Culebra. It only takes about 45 minutes to arrive there. Once you arrive there, there'll be multiple vans there waiting to take you to all the main places there. I went to Playa Flamenco, which is regarded as the nicest beach in Puerto Rico. And I definitely have to agree with that because it was the nicest beach that I visited my whole time there. So. I, I struck a deal with the guy for five dollars per person he would pick us up at a specific time so it was five dollars round trip for the van and then there's a two dollar entry fee to enter Playa Flamenco so th this this beach I would say is a must because this is exactly what you think of when you when you think of a tropical like paradise beach this is exactly how it would look like super white sand the clearest water you'll find there and just amazing scenery and when I went in November it was pretty much um, empty like so it's just super relaxing that's a must another really popular island is Vieques so you you go to the same ferry terminal in Sabre but this time it would just be four dollars round trip and it's actually a bit closer so it's like 30 minutes there's still many vans there that you can go to like the beaches and stuff but I wanted to really explore the island and to do that I wanted my own my own transport so I rented a golf cart there, super expensive, it was like $60 but then after taxes and all that it ended up being $72. So obviously since I was renting a car on the main island for $45 I have no idea how the hell a golf cart is $72 but that's, that's how much it was. I think scooter there was $20 less but I had like a lot of baggage and my wife with me so yeah. So we got the golf cart. but. I just forgot about the price of that. The golf cart was like super fun to drive around in. I visited loads of beautiful beaches. That, that, that island is actually amazing. Also there you'll be able to see like these amazing wild horses that just roam free. Lots of wild chickens <laughs> like you'll see a lot in Puerto Rico but just an extremely beautiful place. The third island I visited is, is called Gilligan's Island also known as Cayo Aurora. So this is actually from Guanica, which is more like down south. You, you're heading about like southwest of the mainland. So from there you can get a ferry and it's only like 10 minutes to get to the island. You can actually see it from, from the mainland and it was a $10 round trip. One thing to note is that there is nothing on the island so you have to take your own food. There's no, there's no stores, no yeah no restaurants no nothing so you have to take all your own stuff but this is a really unique island because it's actually basically just a, a little mangrove there's not that much area there with like beaches or anything but the the water there was amazing and um there's like two cool little rivers that you can swim down with a current i definitely take like an inflatable thing if you have that to like just chill out and lie on and also some snorkel gear because there's no snorkel rental there now going on to some more like nature places within the forest um, I went to two places one was called Cueva Ventana this was kind of expensive $21 per person it basically includes a tour with a tour guide um, a flashlight and like a helmet a safety helmet so it's actually only a one one hour and 30 round trip to do the to do the trail within the cave and it's super easy hike it's pretty much all flat there isn't much going up and down so any age can really do it at the end you'll get this super unique view Cueva Ventana actually means window cave so you'll see why it's called that because you get this really unique view outside of the cave like just some beautiful scenery there and I'd say it's still worth it if, if you're willing to spend the $21 
Another really cool place to visit is Gozalandia Falls, which is in San Sebastian, more like towards the northwest of the island. So for that, it was $5 per vehicle to enter. There you'll find like two super beautiful waterfalls. They also have like a rope swing and people jumping from the waterfall. So it was, an, it was a nice place to relax, but also at the same time, have a bit of fun if you want to. But that was one of the nicest places that I saw on the entire trip. Other than that, there's obviously some free beaches that I went to. On the west coast, I went to Playa Buye and Crash Boat Beach. Playa Buye is, um, yeah, just a relaxing beach, super white sand, clear waters. I keep mentioning in this video, but I was able to just park for free there. And then Crash Boat Beach, I think they have paid parking and also free parking if you get there early. I, I was able to park there for free. Crash Boat Beach was the most fun beach that I went to because you, there you can rent all the things like jet skis, there's banana boat, snorkeling gear, scuba diving gear, you can do all that and there's a cool pier that everybody jumps off and yeah just super beautiful water and just super beautiful beach. It seemed like on the, on the west coast all the beaches look like really tropical compared to the other places. Now going on to food, in the majority of like the touristic areas, the prices that I was seeing were usually like anywhere from like 15 to 25 dollars for like a nice sized meal with a drink. So that, I found that kind of expensive. If you look hard enough or go, if you drive a bit out of the touristic um, areas and, and find more of the local joints, I did find two places that was six dollars and it was like a gigantic meal. Um, it was so much that I could only eat half, so it was like two meals just for six dollars each, but at the same time you have to drive pretty far from the touristic areas to find those kind of places, so yeah, there was a lot of times where me and my wife wanted cheap food, but we just gave up and just ended up spending like fifteen dollars each. Also breakfast, I think I was spending usually anywhere around like four to five dollars just for some like four pieces of toast and a coffee. That's what I was usually finding in the touristic areas. I didn't find any local joints for breakfast, so probably cheaper in those places. Now finally, I will go on to the accommodation costs. So this was actually what I found the most expensive of the trip and really hard to find cheap places. So my first two days, I, I used Expedia in San Juan and I spent our time in Posada Colonial Apartments, which is a um, Super awesome location. It was $88 per day, but it was quite a big apartment and you was literally like five minutes from the beach. And that, But that was one of the cheapest places that I could find that was near the coast and in San Juan. After that, I quickly realized that Air, Airbnb was the way to go to find cheaper places. Still wasn't that much cheaper, but I was using that from then on. Another day I spent in San Juan. Now this time was $46, but the thing is, I was real I was about 20 20 minutes in inland from the coast and it was an area that all the comments said don't walk around at night, stuff like that. It wasn't really a safe area, but I didn't care since I just had a car and I just wanted a place to crash and I didn't want to spend $88 twice the price again, so I stayed there one day. Another day in Saba, we stayed in a place that was like in the mountains pretty much in the middle of nowhere and that was $46 once again using Airbnb and um, that was basically like the first floor of somebody's house that they've just rented out. It was a nice place but yeah it was just kind of out of the way but that was still $46. Another day in Mayaguez. I spent $73 for the night, but the reason I stayed there is because it included breakfast. So we just figured that, oh, since it included breakfast, we could spend that price anyway. Now the lowest place that I stayed in was in a place, I think it's called Fayardo. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it was actually kind of like a hostel. It was a private room, but it was a place where you'd share the bathroom and shower with everybody else that's staying there. So that was $41 and like I said, that was the cheapest place that I stayed in the entire trip. Now $41, I still find extremely expensive for a hostel and that was the cheapest hostel I could find on the, on the island. Usually in other places that I go, you can usually find like hostels for anywhere from like eight, nine, ten dollars per person to stay in. So I found $41 super expensive, especially since you share in the bathroom and stuff like that, but that's just how it is. There isn't that many hostels in Puerto Rico. Some of the main cities have a few, but the other ones were like $50, $60. So yeah, I just found that a crazy price for a, for a hostel really, but 
that was the cheapest place that I stayed and it was called Caribbean Hippo. A really good place if you if you just want to stay somewhere near the Sabre ferry port to do the island like little tours. So I would recommend that. So that's pretty much the cost of my trip there. A lot of you that are watching are probably from the States since it's a very popular destination for people in the US since it's so close and it's a US territory. So you guys might be thinking, oh, that's not actually that bad, the price. But I think it is expensive just because of the fact that even if you look really hard, it's hard to find cheap places to stay. And obviously a lot of the world doesn't earn American salaries. So the poorer countries or people that are just backpacking around, there isn't that much um, alternatives there to, to do it cheaply. Because like, like I said, if you really want to explore the island, you can't really just be spending all that money on, um, on Uber if you don't want to rent a car. And then, um, yeah, just food and accommodation. There wasn't that many cheap options. So I, I think it is an expensive place just because of the fact that it's so hard to find a cheap way to do it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. As I said at the start, I'm pretty sure you'll be doing some of the activities that I did and visiting some of the places that I just mentioned. At the end of this video, I will link a playlist which features each day of my trip, usually like a 10, 15 minute video. So you'll be able to see each activity in more detail to see if you'd like to do it. As always, drop a like if you like this video, subscribe if you like to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.